Hello, hello, welcome to the Mango Monkey Show. My name is Mango Monkey. So I'll make this video for you who has already owned your own home for a number of years. Maybe you've paid off half of it, or maybe the value has grown, and now the debt is only half of the current value. Or maybe 60% of it or 70% of it. But basically you have already built up a lot of equity on it. If this is you, I think you you may be feeling like you are wealthy now. You, you feel like you are rich. So what can you do with all this extra wealth? Well, you can use it to buy a second property. Are you happy with your current home? If not, you could upgrade your home and perhaps rent out the home that you currently have or sell it. If one of your kids at the moment is living in the living room, which is a little bit sad, I think you need to upgrade your home now. When you upgrade your home, you could do this in, in a few different ways. I will go through them now. You can sell your home first, lock in the price, rent somewhere cheap, go back to your parents' home, then buy the bigger home. Another way, you can try to get what's called a bridging loan, which is a temporary home loan. So if you can get a bridging loan, you could actually buy your new home before you sell your existing home. You can try to time everything to happen at the same time. Now the problem is not many banks offer bridging loans anymore. Another way is you can try to time everything so that both your sale and your purchase happen at the same time. So you may not need to go back to your parents' home for a couple of months. So with this method, basically you still, you still try to sell your home first so you know exactly what the price is. But you try to make it so that your, your buyer pays for your home at the same time that you need to pay for your next home. Okay, so all three of those methods result in you having only one home. What if you don't want to sell your home? Well, you can keep both of them. Your bank or your mortgage broker could work out your potential borrowing power, how much loan amount you could potentially get approved for under this kind of scenario. So usually this means you move into a more expensive home and you rent out the cheaper one. So you may ask, is it safe to actually rack up more debt to have a rental property? I mean, you've come all this far, you've, you've paid out half of your mortgage, will it screw you up if you suddenly get more debt? Well, it really depends on your personality, your lifestyle and the people you have around you. Some successful people told me, you don't want more debt. I watched some videos from Dave Ramsey, he is a famous guy in America. By the way, if you haven't watched his videos, I recommend you actually check them out. He is a bit different from me, he had some big big issues with debt in the past. He invested a lot in some high risk projects and took on some short term loans and got into some trouble and since then he always hated debt. He told his, his listeners, do not ever have a debt again, even if it is interest free. It's bad for you, according to him. The only exception he makes is a home loan, because he knows that for you to buy a home with cash will take you maybe 100 years. It's, it's very difficult. But anything else, personal loans, credit cards, interest free purchases, tax debt, he, he basically said no to them. According to him, these things could make you bankrupt. Well, I am a little bit different. I think I am disciplined enough to borrow money for investment. I think investment debt is, is healthy. If you can borrow at a 2% or 3% interest rate, it's likely you can fund an investment product that will give you a little bit more than 2% or 3%. So for example, if you invest in the property, a typical rental return in Sydney is between 3% and 4% if it is an apartment. Probably between 2% and 3% if it is a house. But that's before you count the capital gain, the, the, the increase in value of your property. Now who, who do you follow is confusing. So you can either follow Dave Ramsey or you can follow me, it's up to you. Both methods work. It depends on who you are. If you look at what you've done in the last 5 years or so, you probably know what kind of person you are, whether you want to invest more in debt or not. Have you, have you been saving money if you look back 5 years? If your bank balance always increases every year, I think that's a good sign. When I said increase, I meant a significant increase. So if let's say it goes up $5,000 every year, I think it doesn't increase 
enough. But if you find that every year you have twenty thousand dollar more, then I think you, you are a good saver. I think you can you can be disciplined enough to invest and borrow to invest. So personally, if I was saving twenty thousand dollars each year, I would try to get another debt to invest and grow my wealth even faster. So let me just come back to Dave Ramsey for a second. So what he said is that he's done a lot of research on the super wealthy millionaires in America. So that's someone who has at least one million dollars, one million US dollars of net wealth. So net wealth means the value of the assets minus the value of the debts. So if your home is one million dollars, but you've got a $900,000 home loan on it, then your net wealth is only 100000 So apparently after Dave Ramsey did all this research, he found that the majority of the super wealthy, the millionaires, do not have debts. If someone doesn't have debt, what tends to happen is that person thinks a little bit more clearly. They don't feel a, a pressure to keep making money and ma making that mortgage repayment or the loan repayment. So because of that, they, they feel happier, they feel, they feel wealthier and they make better decisions when they are working. So imagine if you have the same income at the moment, let's say you pay $2,000 or $3,000 each month into your mortgage. If you don't have mortgage, you will have $3,000 extra every month and uh, you, can, you can use it where you like. It's a better lifestyle. But for me personally, I think if you follow his advice, it will take me a very long time to get to $1 million net wealth. So for me, I didn't do it that way. It feels like a snail to me. So what I did is I borrowed money to buy a property to invest. I don't have personal loans, I have some credit cards because I get some reward points, but I don't have any personal loans. So this is what I think might work for many people. So I could be wrong, go see your financial planner because again, I'm not a qualified financial planner. But I think once you have perhaps a $500,000 net wealth, anything you accumulate above that, you can start to invest. So your first time you want to buy with 5% deposit because you want to get into the property market as quick as possible. But for your second home, perhaps you can wait until you have at least $500,000 net wealth. So if you subtract the value of your home, but the value of the loan outstanding, you want to make sure there's $500,000. So let's say you have $600,000 net wealth. So that means you have extra $1,000 to play with. So what you can potentially do is you, you leave the $500,000 untouched, you want to keep it there, but the extra 100,000, you can actually use it as a deposit to purchase your next property. You may not need to have physical cash $100,000, you could actually do something called equity release. Basically, you, you release $100,000 out of the home that you currently have. And when you buy your second property, you probably do not want to pay the lender's mortgage insurance. So you probably want to buy that with 20% deposit. Sometimes you could get insurance waiver if you work in certain occupations like a, an accountant or a medical practitioner or a lawyer. In those cases, you could buy that with maybe 10% deposit or sometimes even 5%. So I think if you do it like this, you could get to that $1 million net wealth a bit faster than if you do not borrow at all. Now what happens if you think that the property value may drop? You don't want to have too much in, in properties. There's something I have been doing since I was quite young. So in Australia, you could actually claim a tax deduction when you put money away into your superannuation account. So normally your employer pays you 9.5% of your salary into it. It's compulsory. So for most people, it probably works out to be $10,000 based on an average salary of, let's say $100,000. And you have up to $25,000 altogether, including the amount that your employer already pays for you to contribute tax-free and claim tax deduction on it. So that means for, for a typical Australian, he or she will have around $15,000 extra that they could contribute into the superannuation. 
and that will reduce their taxable income. This may change from year to year, but this is the situation as of today. One thing with this method is that you need to be aware that once the money is inside your superannuation, it is very, very difficult to get it back. You could get it back if you are in financial hardship. So in your super fund, you could normally choose different investment products. You could choose a balance fund, you could choose a cash cash fund, which is essentially made up of off-term deposits and bonds. It should be quite safe. Now, potentially the benefit of having money in your superannuation is that you cannot actually access it unless you are actually in genuine financial hardship. It could be, could be good for you. So for example, if your family starts asking you for money, you can tell them you don't have money. You, you actually don't have the money available. It's locked away. If your wife asks you to buy something for her, you could say to her, you don't have the money. It could be potentially a good way to, to have your emergency fund. And also for what I know, superannuation is excluded from bankruptcy. So let's say if you borrow too much to invest, and let's say you have maybe 10 different properties, and then every single one of them drops in value, your, your, your tenants maybe stop paying rent because uh, there's coronavirus pandemic, that the bank will need you to sell your properties and then after that you still owe the money because the, the, the debt is bigger than the value of the property when it's sold you, you are going to get bankrupt but your superannuation should still be safe double check this with your advisor I'm not qualified to give you that advice but uh, it's definitely worth exploring further and you get that tax deduction as well okay so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you next time.